Alright, how's it going, y'all? So today, I am very excited because finally, Synology is unveiled. The on-demand sync for Synology Drive for macOS, which has been an absolute huge update that a lot of people, including myself, have been waiting on for a very long time. This update, it was in beta for a while, and it's finally come out fully about mm, two or three weeks ago at the time of filming, and it unlocks so many things. I've already had four different consulting sessions where I set this up for businesses and it's made workflows so much easier. I'm planning on doing an entire video on how to set up an entire workflow for a bunch of remote video or photo editors where everybody just has access to the files and it makes it so much easier. This has been available on Windows for a very long time, but finally Mac OS has allowed it. And so part of the reason this honestly took a very long time to come out for Mac OS was the fact that Apple basically set it up where you have to use their profiles to do this. And so it's actually fully built into Mac OS and it works completely integrated into Finder very cleanly. So first off, what is this feature? This feature is actually a pretty simple feature, but it unlocks an infinite amount of possibilities for just remote workers and being able to share across the country. This feature is pretty simple. It allows you to use Synology Drive, which is kind of like Synology's version of Google Drive or Dropbox. And so the beauty of this is it allows you to have access to them via macOS Finder. They just show up like an external hard drive almost. And you can have like a 50 terabyte file server, but it will not take up that entire space on the computer. Previously with macOS, anything you wanted on Finder had to be completely downloaded to your hard drive 100% of the time, which was really limited on what you could do. But now, essentially you can see right here, Anything that's not actually saved on the local hard drive currently will have this little cloud icon on there. And that means it shows up just fine. And when you double click on it, it'll instantly demand, download it on demand. And then it'll be accessible. And so it unlocks so many possibilities. And it's honestly a feature I've been really looking forward to and use a ton because it unlocks so many things. Then the beauty of this system is it is designed to pretty much not get in your way. Essentially, it'll download the file anytime you double click on it, and then it's gonna keep it on the hard drive until your hard drive starts getting full. And then Mac OS in the background will intelligently just say, hey, we're starting to run low in space. I'm gonna clear out some of these files that have not been used in a few weeks. And so it will handle all of your storage perfectly. You may notice that your disk looks very full, but in reality, Mac OS is handling all of it, so don't worry about that you should not get any problems as long as you don't try to pin, you can manually say, I want to make sure these are always on there. As long as you're not taking up too much of that, you will be totally fine. So a couple of rules for this, you need to be on at least 12.3 with Synology Drive 3.2 and the most recent version of Synology Drive server. Actually, I think that's pretty late. So it's not too big of a deal. And then we're going to be able to go through and set it up. All right, so first off, let's go to the entire beginning of this, and I'm gonna go ahead and log into the NAS. So right now, I've just logged into DSM, and I'm gonna open up Synology Drive Admin Console. If you don't have this, and you've not installed Synology Drive already, just go ahead and go into the Package Center and search for Drive, and it will install all three of these services. And so we're gonna go in Synology Drive Admin Console, and you need to be an admin to do this, and we're going to select a team folder to be added on the server. A team folder is essentially the ability for somebody using Synology Drive client on Mac, Windows, whatever, to be able to sync it locally as well as some other things. And so we're going to enable it. The other thing I've started doing is actually disabling version control because I've found that if you have a ton of files, versioning can really start to slow things down and the database will absolutely balloon. So in disabling the versioning right there is very useful and just set up snapshots mainly for yourself. I'm not gonna go over that. I go over in a billion videos. Set up snapshots and use that for your versioning because it's a lot more efficient and a lot faster. All right, and so now on your Mac, you need to go ahead and download the Synology Drive client. I'm gonna do a quick how-to on to get there. You go to synology.com and then you scroll down to the downloads and then you just select your product type and you can select pretty much any product here as long as it's like a recent NAS, it'll have it there. And now go under desktop utilities and it is Synology Drive client. Then just hit download and select the Mac version right here and download it. Then just install it like you normally would. 
And that is all to it. Once you've installed it, you're gonna see it when you open up Drive. You're going to get brought to this page right here. And it is very straightforward to use. Just hit Start Now and connect your NAS. So here I'm gonna be using a Quick Connect, which is very useful in the case where you, you're going in between a server at home and basically being the same network as the server and on the road. Quick Connect is very useful for that, but the admin needs to open up port 6690 for the fastest speeds, as well as 5000, 5001, or if you've got any other local connections. However, you've got it set up, Quick Connect will be the easiest way to do it though. There are some security implications. Synology has proven itself to be very secure and I, I, I personally have my Quick Connect open. So I'm just gonna go ahead and enter that in here. And if you have trouble finding that, you can go into the web browser, go into control panel, external access, and right here is your Quick Connect ID. So we just paste it in there and then sign in with the username and password. By default, most users should have access to Synology Drive, that's by default. And then they need access to that folder that you, you want to sync. And we're gonna be setting up a sync task. And now we get to select the folder on the NAS. So I'm gonna select, and I'm gonna select that team folder we set up, which was that business folder. And now we're going to tick this, enable on-demand sync. So because of macOS's requirements, they do not allow Synology to choose where the folder is. Instead, it has to be in this specific place. But we're going to essentially just tick it, and now we get to give it essentially a name. So we can call it business. And so it's going to show up in the sidebar of Finder now. Now hit done. So the next thing you need to do is open up Finder and go down and you'll see the Synology Drive folder. It is glitched currently sometimes where the naming does not necessarily come over the very first time. This should be fixed on a restart and a reboot, but you may notice it should say right here, Synology Drive dash business. The other thing at the very start, you're going to have a little window up here that says, you need to enable Synology Drive at the top and just hit enable. I've already done that because I did this already. So that is the two things I have found. This is currently, it's just came out of beta. And so a reboot after hitting enable is sometimes required to get it to work fully. But now we are here. This is what it is. And we can see this cloud icon right here, which is the greatest part about it. This is basically my entire file server on my Mac without having to store all that data on there. So we can go in and just click, double click on it and see it will immediately download it and then open the file. It's very fast depending on your connection. Now obviously if I go in here and I try to download a multi-gig file, it's gonna take a second because I'm over Wi-Fi. So it's got to go and download the entire thing. And then I can, you can also just say download now. So that is one limitation is the file has to be fully downloaded to the computer before that. So one way around this is really useful. Say you know you're gonna be working on a project. We can just go up here. And so say I know I'm gonna be working on this project. I can download this entire folder by right clicking on it and saying pin local copy permanently. And what this is gonna do is this is going to tell Synology to download everything locally to my hard drive. It is going to say, hey, macOS, do not let this get unpinned. And it's recursively going to download all these files. All right, so now if we go up here, we can see that the sync is currently going on. That's that blue. That means currently stuff is being downloaded because we've said, hey, we need to have all these files and these are multi gigabyte files. And so that is what's currently going on. And this is directly linked to the server. So let's go up to the top and I'm going to unpin local copy and that way macOS will intelligently be able to delete everything as required. So now I can double click and let's go into this. So we can see right here, this thumb.psd file, it does not have the cloud icon on there. And so when I double click on it, it opens instantly because it is part of the computer. It is actually stored on the local hard drive. Any change I make to it will also be sent back up as soon as I connect to Wi-Fi. So this is also a useful thing. So say you're remotely working and you need to make sure you can work on a few projects, you can pin them locally to make sure they're on your computer, even if you don't have Wi-Fi. 
So now say it's a large file and I just know I'm not gonna need that for a few weeks and I'm just like, all right, I want to make sure I keep other files, but this is like a 30 gig file that I just don't want on my machine. You just right click on it and say, remove download. And boom, you immediately get your space back from it and it is the cloud icon once more. We can do that with all this, but Mac OS will also by default just handle it. So this file's already been downloaded, so we can see, the, double click on it. Just like that, it immediately opens and it is there. Another useful thing is you can see that even though this guy right here has a cloud icon, say empty PSD file, but you can see that it has a thumbnail preview. And this thumbnail preview has worked with even raw files, pretty much anything that would automatically have a thumbnail, it seems to be working great. Even if it's not downloaded, you still get a preview, which is really, really useful for the vast majority of users. So one other thing to remember is this is currently the file server. So any changes you make on here will be back propagated. So say I call it thumb two instead. We can now go into my Synology over here and you can see right there, it is now thumb two. Every change you make here will be automatically back propagated up. Sometimes you will notice that if something's downloading, especially larger files, it can take a little while. So I would highly suggest if you're about to be working on a massive project and you need it all locally, really utilize that pin local copy permanently because it can allow you to overnight just download a multi-terabyte project if you've got enough space on the local hard drive and be able to operate off of that. Otherwise, you may have to spend a little while if you get a new project or anything like that. The other thing to remember is you need to make sure the sync finishes. So say I'm gonna copy this right here. I'm gonna do a control copy to it actually to make sure that it, does, it actually just copies it and not moves it. And so right now I've copied it there. And you can see that it is not actually up here yet. These photos are not actually on the server yet. They're currently being copied up over. So now all those files need to be copied to the server and you can see it's the syncing right here. So you can tell that that is going on, but just know that until the syncing's done, one, the files cannot be offline deleted from your computer. Just so say you only had a 500 gig hard drive on your Mac and you tried to copy a terabyte of files to the Mac, it's not gonna work because first they have to be saved on the hard drive, copy to the server. You'd essentially have to probably do like a 300 gig copy wait for it to sync and then go, and then another 300 and another 300. That is one fortunate limitation. One other thing to know, because of macOS's limitations with how it's set up, you cannot choose where that folder is. So you cannot do this on an external hard drive, which is unfortunate. But overall, I have found this to be an absolute phenomenal workflow item for so many things. It really has unlocked a lot of capability that was previously locked away that I really, really am glad is finally out here. This is super useful for so many different workflows. And it really allows you to have people across the country all having access to this NAS, all without having to worry about space and everything. It's also great for something like a video editor who can download all the files locally and get that really fast local SSD speeds without taking up and requiring external hard drives and all these things, anything they do up there will just automatically be copied. It's overall a phenomenal workflow and it honestly just works really well. It took a while to come out, but I have found that it works absolutely great. And I've been very happy with it overall. We can also see that as the sync is going on, we can go back to the file server. We'll do a quick refresh over here. We can see the photos coming in and they're copying all these photos on up. So that means we're gonna have access to all of them. It is really straightforward to do all of this and it's very, very, very flexible. This was a great addition and I'm really glad they finally added that because it unlocks so many workflows for different people. All right, well that's gonna be it for this. It was overall a pretty quick video, but it's such a great feature and I've already set up for numerous clients and it's been going very well. Go and leave any other tutorials you like to see me make in the comments below and have a good one, bye. P.S. you can hire me if you want to.